There's one question I get asked more than any other when I do a positive product review. You ask, is it going in the bag, Andy? And I'm gonna reveal what is in my potential bag for 2021 and the reasons why I might make those changes. And it's fair to say the one question everybody, or the club that everybody's interested in is the ones that I've got in my hand right now, which is driver. What driver is going in the bag? But we ain't gonna start there. We're gonna start off inside. We're gonna start off back at four golf and the two irons that are the potential for 2021 for the average golfer. Uh, this for me is the toughest in terms of choice because I think at the minute in terms of irons, there is, I could pick quite a few to be honest with you in terms of potential, but I'd narrow it down to two I think and probably for different reasons. For me, you've seen in recent weeks, those of you who watch, I was so surprised at the performance of the Strix and range of irons. It was mainly based on just how good they felt. Absolutely super soft in terms of that forged head. Fantastic. And I would look personally at a mix of ZX5 and then ZX7s in the shorter irons. I thought they looked fantastic, felt amazing and ultra forgiving in terms of in, in my hands. You know, I mean, I just thought the performance out of them was fantastic and there was literally no compromises to be made. So that seems pretty perfect for me. Um, the next one I'd throw in the bag would be, it would have been a very close call between two irons. One would have been from the 921 range of JPX Mizuno, but I think I'd plumb for the TaylorMade P770. And again, I mentioned this briefly at the end of a video a few weeks back when I was doing a comparison. It was a bit of a surprise, if you like, because it was on the longer irons and I tested the five iron from uh, the P770 up against the P790 and the JPX921, and that was the Hot Metal Pro. And what I noticed was a huge difference in terms of the performance of the P770, at least in my hands, and the performance being just a much better in terms of ball flight characteristics. It was unreal, the ball flight. Peak height, launch angle, descent angle, spin number, just everything about it was superb, and it really sort of stood out as a big difference. So. Feel-wise, P770 is good, but it's nothing like what you get out of a true forged iron. Performance-wise, probably a little bit more forgiving. That smaller head is what I really like, and I didn't, again, seem to lose anything in terms of forgiveness, that between that and the bigger-headed profile of the P790, but the ball fight it offered was unreal. And in those longer irons, it stood out a mile, so it would be I'd take some persuading to go whole hog in them, like I said, but it's particularly stood out. And if you're struggling with your longer irons in terms of ball flight launch and whatever else, then that P770 was incredible. So they're the two irons that are a potential to go in the bag for next year. Ooh. That'd have been one good reason. So yeah, wedges next up, and uh, two totally different wedges in terms of their style and type. And again, two different reasons why I would choose them. So they are the CBX2 wedges from Cleveland. I've been a big fan of these, that wide sole. I think it, it helps a lot of, um, a lot of average golfers. Um, there is a bit of bulk in there and for me the idea of a mix up between a sort of then you go to the other iron which was the mill grind wedges from Taylor made again totally different animal altogether very thin top line but I'll in particular like the tiger woods wedges where the sort of uh, the sole and grinds are so different so much versatility and whilst i like these for sort of error free chipping if you like difficult to chunk one with this thing in your hand around the greens Certainly for sort of more delicate shots, a little bit more finesse, if your confidence is high, if you're playing out of bunkers, that type of thing, then the ability of those Tiger wedge, uh, <laughs> wedges, that was difficult to say, um, the versatility that they offer, there's a lot more playability 
And like I said, it's almost yet again, it's all about confidence. It's how you feel on the day in terms of um, what you'd like to choose. Error-free, plenty of confidence. Then it's this uh, Cleveland CBX all day long. When the confidence is high and you feel like your game's on point, then reaching for those uh, mill grind wedges from Taylor Made, yeah, they're just that little bit more finesse about them, but you've got to be on your game. Right now, as with all these videos, your input is always welcomed. And the question is, uh, what is in your potential what's in the bag for 2021? Is there one product that you've got at the top of that wish list? If it is, stick in that comments box below. Now, for those of you who played in the average golf day this year, you'll realize that you very rarely see water that's still here at Conway Golf Club. It's, it's a bit dark, but it's absolutely perfect conditions. Right, next up is golf ball. Again, uh, similarities in the two that I would choose, TaylorMade TP5 and the Callaway Chrome Soft. Uh, but they do perform differently, I think, with the TP5. It's all about ball speed. It's all about there's, uh, certainly low spinning not a lot of movement or, or reduced movement, I think, in terms of those sort of uh, spin that you might put on those drives in particular. Chrome Soft, very much the opposite end of the spectrum for in, in the sense it's a lot softer around the greens. I prefer it in and around the greens for that sort of feel. Um, but the one notable difference as well is I would choose the triple track option. Uh, I was really into that idea early part of the year with the putter and ball combination. I think it's a fantastic alignment aid never helps you roll the ball in the hole but we're always looking for as much help as we can get i know you can draw those lines on yourself if you so wish but i think the triple track idea i think you'll see much more of that again in the callaway ball range of 2021 and uh, for me it's got to be um it's got to be a positive so yeah either of those two premium ball but like most people if it's uh, if it's my average game of golf, then uh, and I'm not looking to uh, lose a few balls and uh, and waste a fair bit of money, I'll go down the much uh, sort of cheaper option. But if it's a serious game, then it'd be one of those two that would be in the bag. But there's a lot more coming in 21 in terms of golf ball releases, so uh, maybe that one would change. Right, a great way to test triple track. We've got a put with a swing on it. We're going to use that in the alignment of this putter, this Spider FCG, which I think is uh, a real interesting putter. I think, again, quite unique in the way it's sort of uh, balanced. Uh, real interesting one. Love the alignment. And I love the general feel of this putter, full stop. So this could be in the bag. Go on, go on. That's quite good, isn't it? Let's see if we can do that again. All right, over to putter number two. This should be interesting. All right, there's my alignment aid with the ball. And next up, it'd be the Mizuno putter that I featured fairly recently. It's this M-Craft range. It's one of the new ones that's released, uh, I suppose, officially uh, out into 2021. But I did the review a couple of weeks ago forged head uh, cnc milled in terms of the face it's beautiful it's got a real soft feel and again real sort of easy but strong alignment aid um, so for me a real potential option to go in the bag but it's up against it after what the fcg just did couldn't no didn't swing as much to be fair and maybe it's a bit firmer but two real premium putters and again, they've got, they're, they're really, really different. So I think for the putter thing, it's especially it needs, the one thing I don't get is enough time to sort of really practice with one particular and then find out what works best for me. But again, even those two puts, the feel out the two of them is so, so different. Let's try that one more time. Maybe it's got a chance after all. Do you know what? Two from three with that swing and pace, that's decent. Just might have come up just a tad short. First one, and I'll tell you what that is very, very soon. Oh, 
well there's nothing to choose between them two that one might have just avoided the bunker and I'll reveal what that one is very soon now next up it's fairway woods and this is a real difficult area for me I really struggle from uh, people that uh, again know what's in my current bag I go up to a three iron I like playing irons and I like playing a long iron but then it's where I go from three iron through to driver has always been uh, like I said it's been a major issue I've not really got anything in the bag right now uh, consistent that I keep in play the potential for me right now if I was choosing for what is uh, what is available like I said this could change very quickly is this g410 from ping i really like fairway woods with a sort of real shallow face but then it's got a fairly big overall profile its overall mass which i think again cg plays fairly well back uh, it picks up the ball very well indeed it's got a high ball flight plenty of distance and carry off it um, and again the issue that i have with the g410 range was the sound it's just a little bit too harsh for me but overall performance looks the the profile of it it ticks all them boxes the other product for me and again i've only tried it on a couple of occasions is the titleist ts3i now again really like that product i was getting some huge distances off it to be honest with you it was almost performing distance wise carry wise as far as not far off what i'm doing with driver in a lot of occasions so for me i haven't got that product to play out here on the course today but for me more test on that TS3i is a potential one to go in the bag. And if it was purely based on distance, and I know that TS3i, I need to stop saying that because it's difficult to say, is an absolute bomb of a club. But for now, the potential is, and it's only potentially, is the G410 is still the most, the one that ticks most of the boxes right now. I'm just waiting for the game to clear up front. I hit two decent drives there and I'll reveal what the driver is very soon. No doubt the eagle-eyed amongst you will have spotted the two already. And just one of them clubs that's got, it gives you confidence. Like I said, different people like different things, but that just that shallow face sits nice. And that's uh, always confident that this thing is going to fly. That ball flight's incredible for a three wood still stuck down at uh, well 14 and a half degrees unbelievable ball flight and easy to pick up yeah i think it's time for the big reveal and uh, like i said most of the eagle-eyed amongst you have already spotted the uh, the cover on one of them and uh, it was a pxe club um let's start with that one and why it's in the bag it's this proto driver it's the uh, 0811 x plus so that is the uh well i'm all forgiving out the two uh you need to watch the review if you want to find out more about any of these products um but what i will say is it performs just very very well i get on with it um i think from one of the big deals for me on to why i choose it is that address i think that the profile uh, on above that matte finish is it's the best finish in terms of visually uh, at address i love it it's clean it's the matte finish it's dark there's no bright colors going on it just is perfect for me shaft i've got in is a real interesting one uh, it's a white 10 size shaft it is uh, it is not for me if you uh, base your theory on swing speed aligning that to what shaft you, you should use and uh, Again, I've done videos on that this year and that comparison will come in very, very shortly when I reveal driver number two and just what the differences are. But the driver head shaft combination has been really good. Um, I feel like I have to just sort of uh, be, be on my game. I need to be hitting the ball with this PXG driver. There's no sort of, uh, there's no easy swing in it. You've got to be at it, but it kind of encourages that more positive uh, I wouldn't say aggressive but you certainly like I said you, you, you're not you, you're not laying off it and you're certainly going after that ball and for me it's been a positive move and on the other end of the spectrum the one that has been on the wraps with my average golfer uh, head cover it's the B21 from Callaway to Big Berth and again it was uh, a bit of a shocker in terms of how this thing performed shocked in a good way that is I was so surprised uh, none more so on the fact that I had a 45 gram regular shaft in it and uh, despite all the testing that I did it still was the best shaft head combination 
by some way compared to what again I thought I would have had in this driver head it, it kind of like it wouldn't be the driver of choice through looks I'm not overly keen on the elongated body but what I will say is its performance is incredible it's incredibly consistent again the opposite to this and the PXG driver I don't have to get a great deal on this in terms of swing speed it just kind of uh, and it will get out there it defies what you put on it in terms of the distance I've just hit two really good drives that you've seen there in the earlier clip and honestly there was absolutely nothing to split them in terms of where they finished one pulled up just on top of the bunker uh, in the rough the other one had just carried it and then got that 10 yards further I don't know which was which because uh, foolishly I used exactly the same ball but all I can tell you they both the ball flight on them both was superb and I, I'd struggle to split them I think like I said without doubt um, I say without doubt because I never know you you measure forgiveness but I would suggest that I'm probably a little bit more stable and more consistent with uh, this, but I prefer the looks, I prefer the sound, and when I'm on my game, probably the ball flight to that PXG. So it's a real kind of, you know, I don't know. If this is the thing for me. You've always got, there's never that ultimate club. I think the Irons is certainly, you know, it's been there this year. There's, you know, smaller profile irons, incredibly soft feel loads of forgiveness they're, they're they're the kind of things where they're ticking every box have i found a product that in terms of a driver that does everything i'd want probably not just yet that'll be a what's in the bag for uh, potential what's in the bag for 2024 i think if i'm still at it anyway that's that one done i think we'll leave it there it's uh, it's getting a bit dark we've managed to uh, get there i know what the, the actual bag itself is this bag it's a uh, i think it's called a lynx master from Titleist. Uh, i got it from presswick the birthplace of the open and i adore this bag ball we've done all the rest of the clobber is pretty much standard stuff anyway as ever thanks for watching um it's a potential what's in the bag and it will potentially be different as you know in 2021 the one thing i will say this year is absolutely nothing's changed yet uh, i'm not an advocate of the changing of product that frequently so therefore my what's in the bag if i did exactly now would uh, like i said be very similar to what you've seen before anyway uh comments down below don't forget what is top of your wish list for 2021 and uh i'll see you all soon take care